my job was. <laughs> Lord Shiva and his consort, the Lady Parvati, live and live on Mount Kalaika in the Himalayas. And they had a comfortable existence, a loving couple, but Shiva had a tendency to go off on errands and be gone for extended periods of time. And so it was one day that he, after a long discussion, about how lonely Parvati could get and how she would very much enjoy having a child or two around the house. He agreed with that in that conversation that would be a good idea. And then promptly the next morning announced that he was off. <laughs> so a struck. Mounting Nandi is bull. He rode off into the mountain peaks there to consort with the spirits of the air and the asuras of the underground, of the underworld, and to practice yoga. Leaving, of course, Parvati there home alone. And as she had done many times before, she cleaned the house and straightened the property, perhaps did some crafts and very shortly realized that she was absolutely bored to tears and still lonely, so very lonely. So she went to her room and got a scraper down from her makeup cabinet. And she began to scrape the yellow brown sandalwood paste off her skin that she had applied. And when that was off and she had formed it into a ball, she began to scoop more from her makeup jar until she had used it to form the figure of a small child. And she looked upon this image and said, I named thee Ganesh. And she kissed it. And it came to life as a bouncing, healthy baby boy. Now whether the God's children grow fast or whether Shiva was just away that long, <laughs> time came when little Ganesh was toggling around the house and even confidently striding at times. And he was the joy of Parvati's life, for he was bright and imaginative and smiled often. And he was very protective of his, of his mother. So when she decided that she was going to go and take a long and luxurious bath, work some of the kinks out, so to speak, and relax, he was going to defend the house while she was otherwise occupied. So he went to the wall of the house where weapons were hung and pulled a spear down very tall spear, at least compared to our small Ganesh. And he began to pace in front of their house. Up, two, three, four. <laughs> well, it was around this time that Shiva, having spent an extended period of time in meditation and yoga and gossiping with the Asuras and the, and the Devas, thought about Parvati and thought about Parvati. <laughs> wow, I really use time with my console. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Nandi! And he calls Nandi over and he gets on and rides back toward home. And what should he see as he gets there but this little figure wobbling to and fro in front of the house, carrying what looked like one of Shiva's spears. Well, this was not important to her for he was a man. He needed his woman. So he came up to the house and he said, Get out of my way, little one, for I am going to see my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Little 
Ganesh stopped before this tall being, long dreaded hair, the closed third eye. And he planted himself in front and he said, You shall not pass, for my mother is bathing and she is not to be disturbed. Listen, you little twerp, said she. Get out of my way. I am Shiva, the destroyer and recreator of worlds. I am not halting for anybody. Like to observe, of course, the only had. <laughs> now, little Ganesh, not the most eloquent at this stage of his development, said, I am guarding the house against all intruders. You shall not pass. And she was said, I don't have time for this nonsense. And he took out his trident and whoosh, cast Ganesh's head far, far Ooh. off to the sky to where it will never be seen. Well, the commotion was enough to bring Parvati scurrying out the door in her towel. And she looked at the little body, and she looked at Shiva, and said, Lord Shiva, what have you done? <laughs> now Shiva looked at that luscious body in that towel, and he looked at the small body in front of him. And he looked at Parvati again, and she said, Shiva, that was our son. What are you going to do now? And Shiva, showing his close relationship to humanity, said, I'll fix this. And he began to travel north, south, east, and west, covering all corners of the earth. Until one day he came across an elderly elephant lying on its side beside the road. And he said, Lord Elephant, Namaste. And the elephant looked up and opened an eye and said, Oh, Namaste, Lord Shiva. I apologize that I cannot rise and give proper due to your station, but I fear my days are over. Shiva stepped down off the mountain and put a hand upon the elephant's head and listened as the elephant said, I have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren all roaming throughout the forest nearby that I have had in my life. I have no complaints. My time is over. Shiva saw the wise brow and the sensitive years in the inquisitive trunk. And he said, Lord Elphin, I beg a boon of thee. I would like to have your head. And the elephant said, I shall soon have no need of it. You are welcome to it. And so, timing the moment just right, she took his trident and removed the head of the elephant from the body and took it home. Now Parvati saw Shiva approaching with this large head. And she said, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> and he said, wait, we shall see. And taking the small body of Ganesh, he raised it, propped it up, and he set the head on the shoulders and applied his will. And the head reduced slightly in size, but mostly it was the body that filled up to adapt. What had been a slight and small child became burly and full and strong. And soon Ganesha's body was sufficient to hold the head. And the eyes opened. And, the, and Ganesh came to his feet and he bowed his parents. I greet you, Father. I greet you, Mother. It is good to see you. And 
they were together as a family from then on. And Ganesh had an illustrious career ahead of him, of which I will tell more in our time.